Hi everyone, this is Gabby from the Golden Valley Parks and Recreation Department and I'm here today for another episode of Home Wrecked. For today's example, we're going to be making our own sensory bin. If you haven't heard of a sensory bin, it's just a bucket, Tupperware, Rubbermaid bin, bottle, anything you have lying around the house, um, shallow enough to hold items to use as an activity, indoor or outdoor, that can develop senses, help engage your child, yourself as an adult even, um, into a kind of mind-numbing activity that relaxes everything and gets you in a good state of mind. So to begin, for today we are going to need a bowl, a bucket of some kind, um, Tupperware, like I said, anything you have. I'm going to be using an old ice cream bin as my example. Then we need a filler, so that could be as anything from sand, which I got from a park nearby my house, um, or flour, rice, water, water with ice cubes, anything you can really think of. The possibilities are absolutely endless. And then for my filler, I'm using these alphabet letters to hide inside of the sand. And then I'll also be adding for just a little pop of color some sparkly sequence beads. Um, like I said, your fillers can be absolutely anything. Um, you can use different toys, magnets, ice cubes with little action figures or dinosaurs in them, anything that your child is enjoying or maybe at the time you're trying to teach them and include that into your bucket or as an adult, anything that's satisfying to touch, moon, sand, or bees, anything like that, as well as having some tools to then dig into your sensory bin and collect things. I'm just using some common kitchen utensils, um, but this could obviously be sand tools or even tweezers if it's a small activity. So then we're going to begin um, putting everything together and getting our sensory bin set up. So now to begin, we are going to have a little setup here with everything that we need. I have my sand over here in the corner, the bucket that I'll be using, my crackers, and my sequins, as well as my utensils for once we're finished. Um, so to begin, what I'm going to do is just pour some of my sand from the park inside of this bin. I didn't grab very much. I want to kind of leave it a little more shallow. Um, I'm going to then stick a couple of letters in there. So I added in my sequence, and now with the sequence, I am going to just kind of stir that in with my tool to mix it in. Now that I have everything added inside of my sensory bin, you can begin the activity. Um, I am going to take it outside and play with it. I'm going to bring my tongs and all of my utensils in order to dig and manipulate the sand, find the letters that I'm looking for. This is going to go outside with me just because it is dusty, it is dirty. Obviously, you don't have to make a sensory bin that is going to make a mess inside the house, especially if it's a rainy day or you're just looking for an indoor activity. From here, we can start digging with our tools using the tongs to pick up letters that are on the surface. Tools are also a great thing to have and utilize if somebody does not like the sensation of touching sand, flour, whatever it might be. Um, I'm using the spatula now to dig around and find letters that are hidden within the sand. This is a super great avenue to start introducing touch, taste, and smell to younger ages, recognizing what things make us feel. Um, this is an awesome thing just to get your hands into, start messing with the different items that are inside. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you are able to make a sensory bin that's satisfying to you, no matter what your age or developmental skills. Um, I hope you have fun. Thank you.